So next I'd like to invite uh, Dr Claire Roger up to, to speak to us. Claire is an intensive care physician from Nîmes in, in France, uh, a hospital that we have a very close collaboration with. And uh, Claire came to join us in Brisbane in November last year where she brought her husband and her two um, fantastic daughters with her to spend a year in Australia. Uh, it's part of her PhD that she's come here, but um, I'm hoping that it's been a very good life experience as well. So I welcome Claire to talk to us about why she came to our research centre to study with us. Thank you, Jason, for inviting me today. And before I try to show you in the next 15 minutes why it was a good opportunity for me to come to Sierra Reduce, I have one conflict of interest to disclose as a French person, and that I now drink milky coffee, and this nice barista can confirm. Okay, so now, why I came here? If you'd asked my colleague the name, I'm pretty sure they would have this kind of reason in their mind. But actually, the beginning of my project to come here started in that bedroom in my intensive care unit. I was the doctor in charge of that patient, and the nurse came and asked me for the antibiotics. Which dosing would you like to give him? And I thought, well, he's sick, really sick. He's obese. He's on dialysis that could remove part of the antibiotic. I should probably increase the dosing, but in fact, I had absolutely no idea what was the optimal dosing for that patient. And I had the feeling at that time that it was playing a game. So I came and I asked my boss, Jean-Yves Lefranc, how can we answer this really difficult question? And he said, well, maybe I know the guys that can help you. Jason Roberts and Jeffrey Lipman in Australia. So I searched on PubMed, their publication on antibiotics, and I started to read their paper. But to be honest, I haven't finished yet to read all of them. And uh, my uh, boss also mentioned that they lead a center of research excellence focusing on antimicrobial use and high-risk patients including critically ill patient and patient on dialysis. So I thought, yes, maybe it's the good place to go and to learn during my PhD. And I was aware that we had an ongoing collaboration with them. We recruited patients in the DALI study. We were at that time enrolling patients for SMART that will provide useful information for patients on dialysis. And in my unit, we had also collected pharmacokinetic data from patients on different mode of renal replacement therapy. So I put in my luggage this pharmacokinetic data, some projects and some ideas, and of course my family to come and spend a year here in Brisbane. So that's why I came. But now, after nine months, here are the really good reason to come to Sierra Regis. And the first good reason is their expertise in PKPD. They showed us that several pathophysiological changes occur in critically ill patients and that affect the antimicrobial pharmacokinetic, exposing our patient to a risk of endodosing or a risk of toxicity. And the plasma antibiotic concentration are really hard to predict. Hard to predict because there's a high viability, not only between patient, but in the same patient over time. So again, how to know which one is my patient. And a way to consider this uh, viability is to use an approach that I learned uh, during my stay here, the population PK modeling approach. And basically, you collect data from several patients 
in the population of interest, and you try to describe this data using a program that will estimate the pharmacokinetic parameters and uh, try to describe the probability of this parameter in this population. But most of all, you'll try to explain this variability, giving the program information on different variables like the patient age, the weight, the renal function. And then you will test that your model can accurately predict the observed concentration. When you've checked that this model fits well your data, then you can use it to run Monte Carlo simulation. And you can test new doving regimen to see if they can increase the probability to achieve the PKPD target for this drug in that population. Another purpose is to use this approach with a dedicated software to optimize individual dosing. How I developed these skills in PKPD modeling? I developed these skills thanks to an interactive training with weekly meetings where I could share my experience with other researchers. I also had the possibility to do different modelings on different populations, different drugs, and also to model the effect of renal replacement therapy on antimicrobial pharmacokinetic. So using these PK modeling skills and the data from my patient on RRT, it has allowed me to publish results on the effect of different modes of renal replacement therapy for three different antimicrobial and try to determine optimal dosing regimen for this population. And more than learning, I also have the possibility at the end of my stay to test these modeling skills in teaching others. And I would like to mention that the CRE Regis is running a population PK modeling workshop mid-October here in Brisbane. So if some of you are interested, feel free to ask more information. So that was the first good reason. The second good reason is the expert research team. And as many of you know, um, from the ideas to your um, work published, it's a long way. And you need the input of a really well-experienced research team. So during my stay, I improved my skill in designing good pharmacokinetic study to think about all the aspects of a project of the something times appropriate to this drug. Is the sample size big enough? Do I have enough funding to conduct the study? And also, I learned to design a study that comply with a good clinical practice in research. And I was really amazed there's such a good documentation here in Australia to help a researcher to conduct their project. That's really useful. Another milestone in a project is the ethics process. And I also improved my skill in um, writing ethics submission to fit all the regulatory requirements to get my studies approved by the ethics committee, by the governance. I also improve my knowledge in international research legislation to conduct study in other country. But again, you need the input of a well-experienced research team. And when you conduct a pharmacokinetic study, it's good to discuss with these people in the lab. And I would like to thank Dr. Stephen Wallis. He gave me the opportunity to do some lab work and it made me realize how important the sample collection conditions are, that some drugs have specific requirements, and that you need to check that everyone has access to good storage conditions for your sample. But once you respect all these conditions, you can be sure that these amazing guys in the lab will develop a validated FA method for your data. So working with this research team has allowed me to develop three different projects on 
antifungal. Two of this project will start in a couple of months. In the, the first study is a study on Echina candens pharmacokinetic in septic patient with peritonitis. At the same time, we'll collect an experimental study using our expertise in the in animal model to conduct an Echina candens PK study in a septic piglet model. And we'll try to see if in some situation the animal model can be used as a surrogate of expensive clinical studies. And the third project, it's a theory ready study, the SAFE ICU study, focusing on antifungal exposure and try to describe um, the, the pharmacokinetic of antifungal and try to relate this exposure to patient outcome. And with this study, it also has allowed me to develop my collaboration skills. And that's the third good reason to come to Sierra Regis, the strong network. And the Safe ICU study was my first experience in a study coordination. It was a good experience. Monitoring by Jason and Jeffrey, we have at the moment 15 countries involved and up to up to 30 participating ICUs. The study has also been endorsed by different European societies. The second experience in networking is the amino-3 study. It's a survey focusing on aminoglycoside practices in a large cohort of ICU patients. The study was initiated in France, and we plan to enroll 1,000 patients. But using the networking here, we have now started to recruit size in Australia and in Europe as well in UK, and thanks to Despina Colunti in Greece. And last but not least, I developed all these skills in a really friendly environment, a really good atmosphere, and I was able to experience the quality of life here in Australia. So on my way back to France, I will put in my luggage many research skills and projects and try to develop the French collaboration of the CRE Reduce. I also have now a better understanding of antimicrobial pharmacokinetics in critically ill patients, and it will definitely help my clinical practice. And I'll be back in France with my family and a wonderful experience overseas. I would like to thank you for your attention, and I would like to thank Jason and Jeffrey for their support during my stay. Thank you, merci.